Hello, everyone. My name is Banana Brahim, and I'm a product manager from Microsoft working with the Microsoft Cloud for Energy team. I'm so excited to be here connecting with you all and planning for the next six months. Today, Kadri and I will be kicking off a series of Microsoft presentations with an overview of the Microsoft Cloud implementation of OSDU platform. I'd like to start by highlighting Microsoft's commitment to the OSDU community and how from day zero, we recognized the promise of common standards and the hyperscale power of cloud computing. And we knew that together, they could solve the data problem. We also made a commitment to learn from our customers through every step of the process. Should have done that. Um, through every step of the process, and that's exactly what we've done. We have been hearing customer needs since the R3 launch, and we found that the common denominator is the need to improve the user experience and to ensure that the OSU instance is enterprise ready and able to handle production support. And that is why we delivered Azure Data Manager for Energy, which is, or ADME for short, as you've heard it being referred to as throughout the sessions, which was very nice to see. Um, which is a managed OSDU offering that provides enterprise grade service and support. To make this happen, we dedicated over 100 developers to work on ADME, and we made sure that it is easy to deploy and support. We also made sure to thoroughly test it for stability so that you can be confident that it is a reliable product. And to put it simply, as far as reliability goes, ADME is a Microsoft product. So similar to Azure SQL Database, it comes with the same level of enterprise-grade security, scalability, and performance, making sure that it is a robust offering that is not just a framework or an auto-deployment script. So don't just hear it from me. We do have a couple of videos that I do hope will work, because I haven't tested this yet, um, to showcase some of the key uh, uh, functionalities of of uh, ADME. Yeah, oh, it works. So the first one is the ease of deployment. Um, so our team worked tireless, tirelessly to make sure that the deployment of ADME is, of oh, your OSU instances is easy and quick. So this is just a two-click um, deployment process that you can see here. And if you do want to see it kind of on a bigger screen, you can find me or anybody from Microsoft and we'll be happy to walk you through it. Um, so it went from a very lengthy and challenging process to just a few clicks. It was a huge improvement in the user experience. So this second video shows you how ADME transforms how you update, version, and visualize your data. So with all of your data in one place, you can now easily integrate it with your productivity workflows. For example, and you can, I hope you can see this here, you can uh, ingest your well logs and send alerts via Microsoft Teams um, and also visualize your data using Power BI. And in this last video, it shows how you can use ADME to integrate your domain data onto compatible business applications, such as Petrel, um, making it a seamless experience to integrate with your business workflows. And that is what you can see here on the screen. Um, and so that's what I had to share uh, today. And I will, before I hand it off to Kadri to provide you all with a deeper dive on uh, really what goes into ADME, I do just want to say that if you or, you or any company that you're working with is looking for production-ready OSDU instances, then Azure Data Manager for Energy is the solution for you. Thank you. And I will hand it off to Kadri. Thank you so much. Yeah. Is this OK? Cool. I hate talking behind this thing, but yeah, anyways, <laughs> no worries. Thanks. Uh, yeah, so first of all, it's just super, super exciting to see so many people in the room. Uh, when we first started the OSTU, it was, we were able to fit in a meeting room in Shell's Wood Creek campus, and we have some friends from there still holding on and, and bringing this to, to a later stage. So it's great to see the, the expansion here, the interest. Thank you very much, especially this is one of the last sessions. So thank you for being with us. Um, this is Kadri. I do, uh, I'm a proud elected member of the OMC. Uh, and then uh, I'm also doing some work with, with OPC Foundation and, and OSTU liaison around the streaming data. So it's very, very exciting to be here. Uh, let me start with, uh, with one thing that we've been hearing loud and clear is, is that uh, we just 
don't want a data platform. We want beyond that. We want to have out of the box workflows implemented. And we've been hearing this from our customers and our partners for the last five, six years where we uh, keep on working with them closely. So we've been working with OSTU since release zero and release zero was being deployed into actual customer environment. So since then we've been working closely and you heard some of those presentations and you will hear some of them in the next couple of days. But one of the things that I think we're, we're doubling down on is the out of the box workflows. So you're getting your business, getting the applications that you need to run your business, whatever is needed between that and running those end-to-end -end workflows on, uh, on OSTU. So that's our number one thing. And we're, we're basically focusing on three more very important things as Bananas alluded to. One is, is uh, the first thing is the, the, I call it the fundamentals, but it's really having the platform scalable, secure, deployable, manageable, et cetera. Uh, that's, the basic, that's the basic promise. But as a, as a consumer, as an end user, when you get the platform, you should make sure that it, it performs. You should be able to monitor it, run it, and you shouldn't spend weeks or months trying to deploy the platform on your environment. So that's, that's the first thing uh, that we are looking at. The second one, as I mentioned, is the workflows. So you should be able to get your business workflows and run, it, run this on this environment. You shouldn't spend, again, weeks and months trying to get them. And I think the third thing that uh, we're, we're trying to achieve with, with, together with OSTU on Azure is the, is the data piece. So the data should be, you should, it should be findable, you should be able to find your data, it should be uh, scalable, it should be secure, etc. So, and it should be liberated, so the data should be accessible from any application, and also applications like, like Power BI or, or Grafana, whatever the application environment is. So it, it shouldn't be any, any, any property, it should be accessible through open schemas and open API. So that's what we're investing most of our time. Uh, and during this journey, as I said, we've been working together with our partners and with our customers day one, because we want to make sure that uh, the workflows that you need are delivered. Uh, so here you see an example with, uh, uh, with our part of our co-built uh, engagement with, with SLB. So you see the, the, the Petrel and, and, and TechLog working together with, with other data types. And we want to enable these workflows out of the box. Tomorrow you'll hear from us around some interoperability sessions. So one of them is very interesting. If you look into the agenda, we will have a session where SLB and, and Halliburton will be on the stage together uh, with Microsoft and, and Acker BP, so it's not a typo. <laughs> uh, actually, actually, you will you will see an interoperable interoperability scenario in the context of data mesh. So, uh, so we are really serious with workflows, and we are really serious with with interoperability. That's what we are achieving, I would say. Uh, one of the things, like uh, this, this is interesting. It's it's a quote from my colleague and and partner in crime, Oyvind. I think. Uh, the reason why I love this is it, it kind of like shows, if you, if you ask me what's your vision with OSTU on Azure, I would tell you this is my vision. Like we, uh, as cloud service providers, uh, we should be doing the heavy lifting, we should be doing the, the application, I call it infrastructure, and make it in an enterprise ready way uh, so that uh, my colleagues like Oyvind will spend most of their time to find cleaner energy and, and more energy to the world, solve the energies uh, uh, world's energy problem. So that's why. Thanks for setting the vision statement for Azure Data Manager for Energy Ointment. Thank you. There is also a video on this. So if you look into Microsoft's uh, ADME website and, and you will see the Equinor video, the video is much more interesting. So yeah, it's absolutely what. So how do we do that? Uh, again, I'm not going to get into the details. I have to talk for the whole day probably, but uh, we look into. OSTU in the middle, which is, uh, yeah, we keep on changing the name, so I cannot keep up with the slide, sorry. So we have the Azure Data Manager for Energy in the middle, but it's, it's basically the OSTU engine that does the ingestion, the curation, the discovery, and the consumption. And then uh, we provide uh, and support the, uh, the OSTU APIs so that uh, our ecosystem can build applications. And then also, uh, we also provide out-of-the-box integra integration with the productivity stack, like Power Apps and Power BI. Uh, I had the pleasure of writing the first uh, 
Power BI connector, uh, which is pretty still much the same. And, and also I had the pleasure of testing it with, uh, with the four cl clouds. So uh, it, it, it works, there's still one, it should be somewhere still in the GitHub, the version that works with, with all the clouds. And on the right hand side, you see the, um, the Azure Purview, which is our version of Apache Atlas as a service. And then you see the Synapse, which is our version of Apache Spark. Uh, so we're also looking into integrating OSTU with, with the new models, like LLMs are, are a big thing nowadays, OpenAI and, and all these services. So, but, but as I said in the beginning, we're, we're doubling down nowadays on getting the fundamentals out so that you have a reliable platform out with, with enterprise uh, capabilities. Uh, and then that, what that Lambda does with uh, just a few of the logos that you see here, uh, again, this is, this is one of the slides I gave up in continuing to try to put the logos. Uh, yeah, just we'll, we, can, we can talk about it. But uh, I just want to talk about one of them, which is because I, I just don't have time. I have like seven, eight minutes to talk about all of that. So I uh, just picked one. I do apologize from our other partners here. Uh, but uh, with Rock, uh, what, what they have done is, is, is basically they had decades of experience in, in cleaning uh, log data, well log data, and then they put all of this experience to train an AI model, which kind of like when you feed the with well logs and it's, this runs in massive scale, it basically gets, gets out what are the problems with, the, with, the, with, the data, uh, with those logs. So again, it's, it addresses one of the key areas where we uh, address is, is the data quality, uh, availability and, and findability of the data. Uh, and what it does, it does some really interesting stuff. Uh, it not only can identify things like here is a piece of missing data or this well header is wrong or whatever, it also does things like, well, this looks like a gamma ray. I mean, you, you're, you're telling that this is a gamma ray log, but actually it doesn't look like a gamma ray log. So there's something wrong with your, with your tagging or labeling. So it also finds that kind of information. It's, it's really a, a purposely trained AI model where you can get millions of well logs and then you get quality tested data out of it which can generate ingestion scripts for OSTU when it gets into OSTU. And they also have developed Power BI based uh, data quality dashboards for that matter. But again, as I said, just one example. Uh, and where I want to conclude with is, is the work we're also doing with, with the rest of the Microsoft. So uh, we're also looking into getting OSTU at the heart uh, and, and, and having a robust OSTU which integrates with, I, I, we gave the example when I actually showed the video about the Power BI. Uh, that works out of the box, it's pretty good. Uh, then we also looked into things like, okay, so how do we get like 3D models of some, some uh, assets and put them in the 3D modeler in, in the digital twin environment and then see how it works. Uh, so those are the ones that you see on the right. Uh, we got it on a HoloLens and actually it was an interesting experience. We used the, the HoloLens uh, Metaverse application. So, uh, and then it, it, there you can have like avatars of, of of different people. And then it was so real that I, I tried to handshake with, my, with, with the avatar of my friend and it was, it was Hamdan from our team. Like, it was very interesting, yeah. And then the last one you see here is, is uh, uh, we're demonstrating it and if you come to our Houston uh, Center of Excellence, uh, we'll, we're demonstrating it together with SLB. It's uh, actually a CO2 plume dispersion model in, in one of the uh, uh, CCS storage uh, projects that, that we've been doing. Again, this is, this is a view from, uh, from HoloLens. And I will stop here, otherwise I won't stop. Again, thanks, thanks for being with us with this journey. And then hopefully next year we'll, we won't be able to fit here, maybe a bigger. Dennis will, will be <laughs> happy with that. He, he likes to get those challenges. Thank you so much, thanks.